the Roaring Thirties. Prohibition, gambling, and gangsters. Mob hits had become part of everyday life. And if you wanted to survive, you'd need more than a gun. As late as the 1920s and 30s, American gangsters were using this principle of multiple layers of padding to protect them. They made bulletproof vests out of multi-layers of silk. And that could slow the bullets of the handguns of the day. Any bullet traveling up to 1,000 feet per second was slowed enough not to cause mortal injury. In fact, it directly led to Smith & Wesson developing the 357 Magnum. As a marketing ploy, Smith & Wesson said, this is the gun that takes the proof out of bulletproof. Downtown shootouts, drive-bys. Chicago was covered in gun smoke. In the end, a vicious murder would lead to the invention of an entirely new form of body armor. In 1893, the mayor of Chicago, Carter Harrison, was shot in cold blood in his own armchair, wiped out by gangsters. Chicagoans were shocked. Something had to be done. What it took was some divine inspiration. This is the parish where Brother Casimir Seglin invented the uh, bulletproof vest. Casimir Zeglin was a priest at St. Stanislaus Church, Chicago. Shocked by Mayor Harrison's death, he set off on a divine mission to create a bulletproof vest. For 15 years, he experimented. Steel shavings, hair, and moss were all included in his cloth designs. Nothing worked. But then he tried silk. Silk is stronger than steel and has the ability to stretch 30% longer than its original length without breaking. A spider's web hit by an insect will absorb and displace the kinetic energy. Zeglin applied this principle to bullets, but the problem was to find the right weave. Only when Zeglin visited the great silk weaving mills in Europe did he find a technique to produce the perfect four-ply weave. He came back to Chicago. He wove this silk together into the cloth and invented the, uh, the vest. Determined to prove the effectiveness of his invention to the skeptical residents of Chicago, he came up with the ultimate demonstration. He believed so strongly in what he did that he uh, went to a, a Chicago theater and demonstrated. He wore the vest. As the crowd watched, an associate, Ashley Weber, pointed a gun at Father Zeglin. Fired a shot. It didn't penetrate. The vest withstood uh, the bullet. He certainly believed in what he was doing. And, I, and again, I, I suspect that he, he, deep down in the, in, in the inner sanctum of his soul, he felt that this was his call from God and he was gonna put his name to this. This was his vocation. So, you know, God wouldn't let him down. Zeglin's soft bulletproof vest was a massive breakthrough, but it was no quick fix for soldiers on the battlefield. In 1914, a Zeglin vest could cost as much as $800, almost $15,000 in today's money. In June 1914, Archduke Franz Ferdinand of the massive Austro-Hungarian Empire visited Sarajevo, wearing one of Casimir Zeglin's bulletproof vests. Just prior to the First World War, Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria was riding in an open uh, car and he had a bulletproof vest on. Uh, the problem was the guy that shot him, um, shot him in the neck. If you're gonna wear a bulletproof vest, make sure the other guy shoots you in the chest. Ferdinand's death triggered World War I. Zeglin's vest didn't stop the bullet and it didn't stop the war. 